What does it mean to belong to the body of Christ? What is God's plan for the church? The answers to these questions we will begin to explore on today's episode of Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, where we're looking at episode 11, Introducing God's Fit Body Plan. Word Search is a place where we get to search God's Word and a time where we allow God's Word to search us. We're here to encourage godly character development as we stimulate seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness in the hope that that will inform and transform our prayer and practice. For here on Word Search, we're here to find treasure in God's Word that will allow us to be hearers and doers of that Word for God's glory. On Word Search today, we'll be having an overview of the new series covering God's Fit Body Plan, as well as reading Ephesians chapter 4, having a look at the context of the book as a whole, and how Ephesians 4, the content, fits into that, as well as giving some hints as to how that will lead us in our series on God's Fit Body Plan. As ever, we'll wrap things up with some prayer points. So, God's fit body plan is based on the premise that every believer, every follower of Jesus Christ is a member of the body of Christ. And that means every believer belongs to others in Christian fellowship. God has a plan for how his body is to function and that plan requires each part to function well. As a part of the body, it's good to know how you fit and how we fit together to function as God wants us to function. And that's what we'll be exploring in this new series of God's Fit Body Plan. At this time, to explore it in the Word, or to begin to explore it in the Word, let's consider carefully Ephesians chapter 4. To read that scripture, please allow me to introduce to you my good friend, Shirley Evans. Ephesians 4. Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and in all and living through all. <clears throat> However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scripture says, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens, so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son, that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. 
with the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good hard work and then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Thank you so much, Shirley, for that reading. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the reading of your word. We understand and recognize that when we take time to read your word and hear your word read, and when we meditate on your word, there is a blessing available for us. We seek that blessing at this time. Open our eyes to see what you're saying in your word once more, so that we can please you by doing what is right in your sight. Do this for us, O oh God, as we seek you in Jesus' name. So that's the reading of Ephesians chapter 4. Let's provide ourselves some context in terms of how that fits in with what's going on in Ephesians as a whole. In Ephesians, Paul is outlining God's eternal purpose in Jesus Christ. How everything is to find its culmination and its fulfillment in the rule of Jesus. Jesus, by his death, and resurrection has made a new humanity he has made the two one the two being the jews and the gentiles he's now made them by his death and resurrection he's made them one new humanity and that humanity expresses itself in particular through the church and so as we look at the church we understand likewise that jesus is the mystery of the old times that's revealed in that time so all of that mystery that the people of israel were looking and searching for is revealed in who jesus is and then how the church operates in the light of that knowing that now the church reflects jesus to the glory of god which is how the church is the body of christ they are the living representation of who jesus is in the earth as he is their head and then we see that the church is based on relationships that honor God. Relationships with each other, relationships in the family, relationships in the working world, relationships beyond that. All of those relationships are now to reflect the reality of who we are as the new humanity in Christ Jesus. And that new humanity, as we see later on in Ephesians, is prepared for the reality of spiritual warfare. That spiritual warfare that culminates in Paul's request for boldness to proclaim the gospel even in his condition. So that's a rough overview of the context in which we look at Ephesians chapter 4. And when we look at Ephesians chapter 4 in a bit more detail in terms of the content, what we discover is how Paul initially wants those who have heard the good news of who Jesus is and who we are in Christ to then pursue peace and unity through the ones 
that we share, the one faith, the one baptism, the one Father and Lord of us all, those ones that we share together should be good reason for us to pursue the peace and the unity that we have in the Spirit. And in the light of that as well, Paul goes on to share with us how each of us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ have been given a gift. And with some of those gifts, Jesus has sent particular gifted ones to help to build the body of Christ, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, which we will come back to a bit later on. But the idea of the body building is that the body should reach maturity so that everyone reaches the fullness of the maturity of the standard of who Jesus is. And that maturity is reflected in believers exhibiting Christ-like character. And in the light of that, Paul goes on to make a clear distinction between how that character is different from the old way of life, the way of life that people have emerged out of in learning who Jesus is. And how Paul's encouragement now is to embrace the new life in Christ and a new character that has an impact on the relations, as Paul will go on to explain in the other chapter. So when we look at the hints in Ephesians 4, it's going to lead us to ask these questions that will be the basis of what we're going on to explore. As in, what are those gifts that God has sent to help the body? What are those all about? What is the work of the ministry that the saints are equipped to do? What, what does that mean? And if we know that we're different members in the body, what do those different members do? How do they function? And not only that, how is the body as a whole fit to function? What does that mean? What does that look like? And then we can ask ourselves the final question, why does all of that matter? So in the light of what we see in Ephesians chapter 4, and we will zoom in on one particular area, that will be the platform for us to explore together God's fit body plan. And in all of that, we're always reminding ourselves that as a part of the body, it's good to know how you fit and then how we fit together to function as God wants us to function. In the light of that, I'd like us to consider some prayer points. The first prayer point that I want us to consider is let's praise God for Jesus. This entire series is based on who Jesus is, what he has done, and who we are in the light of who he is. So let's praise God for Jesus, our Redeemer, our Saviour, and our Lord. And then let's thank God for the body of Christ. Let's thank God that he has this excellent plan that through Christ there will emerge this brand new body on the earth to reflect the glory of who Jesus is. And while we're thanking him, let's go on to ask God for even more insight on what a fit body looks like as far as he's concerned. And as we ask him for that, let's seek God for his love to appreciate his body all the more. And as we do that, let's celebrate God for the eternal purposes that are fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Let's celebrate God that his plans are coming to fruition. It doesn't matter what the world says and how things are developing. His plans are being fulfilled. His kingdom is coming. His will is being done on earth as it is in heaven. And as we celebrate God for those eternal purposes being fulfilled in Christ Jesus, it gives us a reason to hope. And then a reason to ask ourselves, where do we fit in God's fit body plan? Next time on Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, we'll be looking at episode 12, God's Body Builders. And we'll be exploring what that means. In the meantime, please remember to like this video and then share it with those that you love and you care for, inviting them to explore more of what we're exploring with what God is doing in his church at this time and remember to subscribe to the channel as well turning your notifications on so that you can be alerted to when new episodes of word search crop up if you'd like to support us here we would appreciate that support do so by getting in touch with us on the contact details that you'll find in the description below the whole purpose of word search however is that we encourage you to apply the word in your daily lives. There's every opportunity for you to explore how you can be fit for function in God's fit body plan. Thank you so much for supporting us here on Word Search. It's hugely appreciated.
because here on Word Search, we're ever keen to be finding treasure in God's Word so that we can be hearers and doers of that Word for His glory. Until next time, here on Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, God richly bless you. Shalom.